All right, so the second stream behind the scenes of this Broken Spear single, Turnaround. Just spent a lot of time looking into alternatives just because there's so much lag and distortion, but nothing super straightforward and feeling kind of beating myself up a bit for why am I creating this additional content? Um, but we're just going to push through and do it. I've loaded up a version of the project that's a bit more consolidated with more frozen tracks that should hopefully help with the latency issues. And um, if there's some distortion, so be it. I just won't be able to open up some of the virtual instruments, unfortunately. Um, so this song began in 2021. I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico for a month, and my friend Connor was hosting me. I was in his living room one day, just like fiddling around in Ableton. I was playing on this Akai, no, it's not Akai, it's X key, uh, 25, 25 key MIDI keyboard that's kind of happy, like a Mac uh, keyboard almost. So less expressive than the synth that I used to record the piano riff for Ambient at Heart. And I feel like in some ways the instrument or like the hardware that you use does kind of define what comes out of it because here, the chords that I landed upon were kind of more, uh, maybe less expressive and more kind of like chunky, like here we go. So that's really the main kind of like body of the verse. And I think I started with that as well as this Thing I'm calling squeaky lead here. That's a, a Jupiter patch. Let's hear that. Oh, there's a filter on it. And you can hear some of the distortion coming in there. So I feel like the whole concept of this was this kind of idea of turning around. Um, Whereas the first tune was maybe more about my kind of personal life and my exploration of self and personality and being kind of placeless and hopping from city to city. This one I feel like was more kind of about like, you know, text message, breakup, or like distance in a relationship mediated via technology and how someone can maybe go from ghosting to uh, turning around and being on your side and being very responsive or playing phone tag and zipping back and forth between audio calls and sending images uh, via SMS. So I feel like the synths also wanted to kind of embody this like crystalline, like dreamy energy, but this lead, I feel like is really the idea of like the zipping kind of woo, 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 like almost like there's like whirring or something. Um, so I feel like that idea. So the basis of the synth work and the instrumental really, if we just solo the keys for the beginning, I think gets that across. <laughs> and it, you can tell it's starting to distort there. So I guess moving on from that was enough of a basis for me to start laying down vocals and this vocal process, I feel like, took a very long time, I guess, over the course of, um, you know, two and a half years or something like this, moving between computers. I feel like I got this last part, um, the last section first, actually. Like, there were lots of demo and scratch vocals, but um, lyrically, I feel like when I was just kind of, this is different than Ambient at Heart, where rather than writing all these phrases in advance and then turning those into melodies, this was more my usual kind of process of just like improvising, singing on top of uh, demos and then certain lyrics just kind of emerging. So I'll actually solo the vocals and go to this last section. Uh, that's extremely crunchy. I guess I'll talk about it while I kind of like freeze these uh, tracks in the hopes of having it play undistorted. But the lyrics here are, you can't fake to save your life because you're honest. Um, I can't see you now because it's August. And I feel like personally that's coming from a pretty real place for me. Um, and this melody I feel like really just emerged for this show that I was playing virtually for Numenaloom, the record label. 
and this live stream for Jan Julius's Meat Shot Idyllic release, a uh, Portland artist. And I was recording this demo at the time and I wanted to sprinkle in some kind of like unreleased pieces. So this was like an unreleased demo that I included in that 2021 summer release, which now that it's almost three years later is kind of cool to see how it's evolved and how those kind of nonsense lyrics have turned into something real. So I feel like this was very different than Ambient at Heart in that I wasn't trying to fit the minimalistic mold of like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, but I was going formally more in my usual Broken Spear route, which is like A section, B section, C section, um, and having no repeating kind of chorus. But I was thinking like, okay, what is like some kind of core DNA of this song vocally that might like puncture, penetrate all three different sections? And that's kind of the vocal idea of like, turn around, turn around, turn around. And I feel like it morphs and changes. Um, so for example, here, you can maybe hear it now that it's frozen. You can't think to save your life cause you're honest. I can't see you now cause it's a guess. You can't think of me out. So turn around, so turn around. You can't think to save your life cause you're honest. I'll skip to the end. So then you have that harmony come in, so it's like, turn around, turn around, and that's very different to the first part where you have like that looping vocal. Uh, it's glitching, but you kind of get the idea, and then it returns in this kind of like lower pitch. And it's also kind of gated. So the whole kind of like, yeah, that piece that's in the A section, the B section. Let's see the B section. <laughs> um, let's see if I can just play this. Yeah, the concept is there, even if the latency isn't really allowing it to come through super clearly. Um, I guess next we could look at the percussion section. And here, rather than using my usual kind of drum rack, I was interested in doing what a lot of producers do of just like copy and pasting little audio slices. So let's see what kind of uh, rhythm section emerged here. Pretty simple pattern there, and then later there's some movement. I guess I'll freeze these two in the interest of... I don't even have effects on them really, so it's a little bit baffling as to why it's uh, like this, but um, there's some more movement here. So that was fun to kind of like arrange this around the vocal and uh, create empty space. Later, I bring in these breaks, which um, I think I automated a filter on. Let's see. No, they're pretty much just played straight. They're quite low in the mix. You have this riser come in, these soapy kicks afterwards. So the first part of the song is quite mellow at 88 beats per minute, and then I guess it doubles, so it's a bit under uh, 180 beats per minute, 176. And I feel like this is the really the build of the kind of like harmonic density or kind of feeling of overwhelm or overstimulation that you get. Um, the kind of fun part that would be useful maybe is like thinking about how I was making this uh, noise kick down here that's really part of the percussion section but is in the synth section because I synthesized it from Spire and let's uh, solo this noise kick. Oh, there it is. There's, there's some automation thing turned on. Um, so I guess I'll maybe like cut out the last bit, but 
the idea here was to kind of accentuate the percussion with some automation and give it some like life. Like you hear the gate changing on the kick sound. I guess it's a release since it's actually synthesized noise. I'll play it again. And then at the end you have like this filter swoop that is pretty fun. Yeah, the resonance here swings up as well as the frequency comes down. So like adding this level of like texture to the breaks earlier as well as the kicks. And that kind of movement on this like Umru white noise instrument, I think is where that's coming from, or it might be this igloo ghost sample. Let's see. Yeah, it's, th it's this. And what did I do here? Um, you can see here the pitch envelope. I've done some automation to kind of make that transition feel pretty intense. And you can hear it there with the noise. And this is before that C section. Um, <laughs> I guess we'll kind of have to play one stem at a time. So that's kind of an overview of the percussion section. And what's this tappy? Why did I call this tappy? Oh, this I think was fun because I was having the kick mirror the bass line. So you can see the MIDI is different, but since um, the kick is actually a classic simpler, I believe the pitch of the kick is actually changing with it as well. Um, let me, or maybe it's not, but it's so like low frequency that it's kind of hard to tell. But I think the idea of like this kind of like super kick or like super 808 uh, is used a lot these days. Let's see where the bass is so we can play them together. Yeah, it's the same MIDI clip. It's called Tappy. So just kind of supercharging it a little bit. I guess now that we're in the bass, let's see what was going on with this main bass that was made in Spire has a side chain on it, but otherwise nothing fancy. Let's see. Oh, this was back when I was using this uh, speaker on automation. I don't use that anymore. These days I just turn off the clip like that and deactivate it. So that baseline actually wasn't used, but this is the kind of classic like ascendant chord progression used a lot of the time. Pretty simple. And then I always like to kind of like layer in a dirtier bass synth, which this I guess was also made in Spire. That's why it's called Tappy, I think. It's like, <laughs> just feels Tappy, right? And what other bass? I guess this section, I have some 808s that are pretty blown out. <laughs> Extra blown out by the zoom. <laughs> Latency. <laughs> you can't even hear it. I guess I'll freeze it so we can hear it later. Um, oh, that's fast. Let's see how that sounds. Oh, it's not just one note. There's like, so what I must have done here, as you can see it a bit better now, is um, I must have loaded in this bunny 808 into a simpler and then play it like an instrument, like tapping it out on the keyboard to get that pattern. And then I must have frozen it as audio. And what is that accentuating there? I guess there's this squeaky lead. That's more of the turnaround motif there. Um, I guess then the most kind of interesting thing before getting to the vocals to kind of talk more about the production would be to think about the keys. 
And this was kind of the last thing that I added in the song because the past year or so I've been really interested in like this species of like piano club music that you hear in uh, A.G. Cook did this remix of a uh, Kane West's Dead or Alive stream, like one of the, uh, I think maybe a Halloween show. And it was in like this SoundCloud set and uh, it's unreleased, but I think was a really good example of how you can layer all these pianos um, and have it actually be kind of a great proof of concepts for how kind of harmonic overload could be interesting in a club setting. So I was trying to explore that here too. You can see the um, MIDI clip is called Piano Club. So here was the chords that was originally on there. This kind of like ravey super saw with like an electric piano, but then I wanted to build on top of that and add this piano. And I think I played this out just again on like, this isn't on this thing. <laughs> And then I layer this additional piano on it. So there's two pianos now. I'll turn off the saws. And then, um, it loops, but I add in like some extra kind of like flourishes. So it goes do do do. So before it just goes do. But here, you, if I open up the MIDI, you can see that I added in some like this little step here. So just these extra kind of flourishes that make it feel overwhelming as the section really, really builds and um, probably won't let me, but I'll try to play all of it. You'll just have to listen to the actual uh, recording, I guess, to really understand that middle build. Um, so let's see, I've done pretty much everything, I think, at this point of the instruments. So I want the other percussion, the effects, some lasers, uh, breaks, kicks, snares, claps, yep. Keys, I talked about those synths. Um, yeah, more plucks. The outro, the plucks might be interesting. Oh, I haven't talked about that, triker lead. So this is, looks like Dune and Spire, or maybe two Dune instances. And uh, I actually made this for a different song. It was at a similar uh, BPM, so I just kind of repurposed it for this. Um, but it was originally from this thing called Triker Gang. And uh, I added in this later, this kind of like zippy, Kind of with some glide on it. So I feel like both of those kind of add to that harmonic overwhelm also. Um, bass was nothing complicated. And then I guess getting to the vocals. So like Ambient at Heart, in terms of the engineering and recording, I did these on a different computer. Um, just to have waves tune, which stupidly doesn't work on this machine anymore. And then I pumped the vocals, got my favorite takes up, although it looks like I did some more chopping here. And then the chain here is do. I have, yeah, so that's performance. So similar to Ambient at Heart, I think I sung this one a semitone or two below the actual key, added some formant shifting, but then my usual vocal chain. I have some vocal synth on here for some reason. Maybe I did a vocoder somewhere, some driver for dirtying it up at one point, but it's just a lead, a double, 
I guess the backing, which is probably actually the harmonies, these two backing tracks. And then again, I did a simpler um, for some layering. Let's see what that is. Yeah, so actually quite similar to Ambient at Heart, just like taking a really small chop to add kind of texture in the high end. Um, and lyrically, I think I, this was kind of a more classical case of me maybe improvising the vocals and then writing the lyrics to fit the melody that emerged. So I think this is when I was interested in bringing in more harmony, bringing in this like extra layer of the lower octave. And then I actually bring in these chops from the A part. So it's like two parts on top of each other. And then I think I even bring in another layer of chops here. They're not really chops. They're just like additional vocal parts. <laughs> just to like really lead to that big, big sense of overwhelm, because this is also when all the pianos are going nuts uh, before that squeal transition. And then to kind of like my favorite part of the song, which is this like 210 to 240 section that I feel like I could kind of just listen to on loop forever. I feel like similar to the Ambient at Heart stream, this is kind of like uh, the machine telling me to sign off. So yeah, that was turnarounds. And I feel like it offers a nice kind of foil to the formal minimalism of Ambient at Heart uh, to instead kind of like look at how these different melodic ideas can like be interspersed and weaving into one another and still feeling like it could be a pop song or maybe a club tune, but somewhere in between that's almost like this intense ambience of uh, all of these different elements kind of layered on top of one another. It's maybe more of like an intellectual exercise than maybe something that someone would want to listen to compared to ambient at heart, but I feel like is me sticking true to the kind of like broken spear formula in some ways, whereas, but still foregrounding my vocals, I think that's like the kind of difference here. Um, but structurally, I think is kind of more faithful to my usual uh addiction to stimulus of non-repetition so yeah <laughs> 